I asked the pediatrician a million, you know, first time mom questions. And one of my questions was, the whites of her eyes look a little yellow. And the pediatrician looked and she was like, okay, I can see what you're saying. Let's just send her to Children's to get some testing done just to be safe. And then that night, the pediatrician called us at like 9 p.m., which we were really surprised about. And she was like, well, we got the results back. I talked to a liver specialist at Children's and they're very worrisome. So they want you to come the next morning at 9 a.m. for an ultrasound. The pediatrician called back 20 minutes later and said, I talked to them again and they want you there immediately. Biliary atresia is a developmental problem with the bile ducts. Typically, babies are completely normal at birth, but sometime in the first couple of months of life, for reasons we don't completely understand, the bile ducts begin to scar. And over weeks to months, they can completely block so that bile is no longer able to flow from the liver. So immediately we found out that the only cure for this was gonna be a transplant and she was gonna need one sooner than later. Jordan and I both sprung into action and we said, okay, can we get tested? You know, cause my biggest fear is the sicker the kid, the higher up on the list that they go. But we just were not prepared to see B's health deteriorate like that. Being a living donor, I'm pumped. I mean, think about it. As a mom, the only thing you ever want to do in your whole life is to help your kids and fix what can be fixed, and I get to do that. It's a little bittersweet because the idea of having, the idea of having both your wife and your daughter is tough. But it's also really exciting because she gets to solve the problem. There's nothing subtle about living donation in the sense that we're working with the liver, there's a fair amount of blood supply to it, and so there's risks of going through a decent sized operation in terms of the recovery and potentially um, the consequences of some of the complications that can arise. And Mrs. Widener recognized that and said, I'd rather go through the surgery myself if we can transplant B before she was any sicker. It's dramatic to the parents when they're, you know, they're used to having a, a child that's yellow orange and they come out of the operating room and already they see a dramatic improvement in the skin color. I woke up and my first question was, how did B, how's B doing? And they said, she's doing great, she's awesome, she's in the PICU, everything's great, and that everything was fine with me. I tried to videotape a little bit of the experience because it was almost hourly watching just the amazing PICU team and how phenomenal they are. Hour by hour, it was a line was being withdrawn, it was complete, and this medicine was complete. But then mentally, you're watching day by day, and you can hold her, and the first time you can hold her, it's this huge milestone. So B is now two months post-transplant, and as you've seen, she's doing fantastic. But there are still risks, so I still see her at least once a week. I examine her to make sure that there's no signs of any complications from the transplant, that there are no signs of any serious infections that we need to treat. Giving the gift of life to somebody else, it is just such a way to go out. So we feel like after the surgery, she will continue beating the odds, that she will get better quick, she will be healthier, and she will go on to live a normal life.